Hi, I'm Middlesex County FIOLA Director Ron Rios. Welcome to Spotlight on Middlesex County, where you can get the latest information and updates on developments in our county. Today, we will discuss a cause very close to my heart, taking care of our veterans. Many of us will take some time on Veterans Day to reflect on the sacrifices that they have made for our freedoms. But we must also remember that many of them face hardships like homelessness, poverty, illness, and unemployment. Middlesex County believes that when our veterans need help, it is our duty and privilege to aid them. Today, I am joined by Jerry McKenzie, head of the Department of Community Services, and Bob Porter, VFW District 8 Senior Vice Commander and Quartermaster of Post 370 in New Brunswick to discuss the programs Middlesex County has to assist veterans, how veterans can obtain the help they need, and how each of us, our residents, can give back to our servicemen and women. Welcome, Jerry and Bob. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for joining Thank me on the show today. Jerry, on October 6th, I was able to make one of the most thrilling announcements of my public service career. Middlesex County effectively ended veterans homelessness and maybe you can tell our audience a little bit of what that means. Sure, and it was a very, very exciting day. Um, what that means is that the county has put into place the infrastructure and the resources to address any emerging needs that a veteran may have in regard to um, his housing and being placed into permanent housing. What it also means is that we put partnerships into place because it is a, is a very large undertaking. So we had to work with our federal partners, our state partners, and most closely with our local partners, including social service agencies as well as faith-based institutions, to work collaboratively and use our resources to the best that we could to move veterans into permanent housing. Uh, the types of uh, financial support that we provide to the veterans are uh, rental assistance, whether it be rental arrears or current rental payment. We can help with down payments. Um, as well as some financial support for other obstacles that they may be experiencing in regard to their um, housing status. Um, in order to be certified as having reached function zero, we had to be assessed very closely and document um, our services by three federal agencies, including the United States Interagency Council on Homelessness, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, and the Department of Veterans Affairs. Jerry, you and I participated in a phone call uh just the other day, and we received a phone call from uh, U.S. Secretary of HUD, mm -hmm. Julian Castro, to congratulate us on our achievement of effective, uh, effectively ending homelessness. And, uh, and he shared with us congratulations also from President and Mrs. Obama. Yes. And, and that was exciting to see that the president, the first lady, and the secretary of HUD uh, recognize that we were able to uh, make that major, major accomplishment. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit on that phone call and, and, and uh, th that achievement. Sure, I'd be happy to. It was uh, quite a moving call. Um, those of us who got to participate in it, I think, were very, very touched by the message that was shared, um, to hear the words. Uh, that were shared with us and that we would wish to extend to all of the people at the county who work so diligently on this as well as all of our partners um, to hear the message not only professionally uh, but personally because clearly in the words that were shared with us uh, thanks from uh, the president Mrs. Obama and thanks from the nation um, it was very very moving and very inspiring and something that we really want to share with everybody who's worked so hard on this and I just uh, also just received a letter from uh, Mrs. Obama, the First Lady, congratulating us. And, and, you know, it just inspires you more and it gives our staff, because obviously you and I didn't do this alone. We did this with our team, our staff, who are really committed. Absolutely. And, 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 and they do it not as a job, they do it as a passion. And, and, and that has to be recognized. So it really, it, it made me feel uh, great about them recognizing us as a team. And, and you could set, see that it was definitely genuine. That, Absolutely. That, that, that conversation. And, and he made sure that he had, that we had, you know, some folks from our, our end of county government uh, on that phone call as well, which, which made me feel good. Bob, maybe you can offer your thoughts on what this means to, uh, to our veterans. Well, uh, 
Well, first of all, obviously, it gives the veterans that uh, are, that utilize the program a, a feeling of stability, right? Uh, which they obviously were lacking if they were homeless. And also, looking at it, extending that a little bit more, it, it offers them a feeling of acceptance, uh, being accepted back into society, uh, rather than being ignored and just put up uh, out of sight, out of mind. Um, so it's uh, very heartening to feel to, for them to feel that and to uh, they need that to be reintegrated back into society after coming out of the service. So. And, and and you can appreciate that even more so because you were and I thank you for that. You were a Vietnam veteran and you served. I understand three tours in Vietnam. Two two tours, two tours yeah. in Vietnam. Yeah. And I remember during that war, and I'm sure you remember it even more so, of what happened to our veterans when they were coming home from Vietnam, how they were received, not in a, not in a nice way. Uh, well, I, I tell you what, a, a lot of uh, Vietnam veterans uh, feel this way about it. We, uh, you know, taking, making lemonade out of lemons, uh, uh, we take that negativity and we use that to make it where our society won't greet our new veterans coming home that same way. So uh, I think that's a positive uh, thing that came out of that be because of, that inspired us to, to do that. Yeah, and we don't want that to happen ever, exactly. ever, ever again in the history of this country. Correct. Because, you know, without our veterans, we wouldn't be able to be sitting here giving our opinions. We, right. we wouldn't be able to go to the church or, or, or synagogue or temple or whatever place of worship we want to do. We wouldn't be able to have that free press that we have where we can write our opinion, whether we agree with the highest office in the land, the president. We, we could disagree with him and openly say that and not worry uh, for any kind of repercussions because of the veterans. And that's why I feel so strongly about that. Bob, we work with two uh, federal uh, programs and partners, HUD and the VA, correct? Correct, uh, w w along with some other agencies that are out there as well. Uh, HUD uh, with their HUD VASH system. Uh, HUD VASH is a, a voucher system that uh, uh, for a qualifying veteran uh, uh, gets rental assistance. Uh, based on their income, uh, a portion of their rent is paid by that voucher every month. And that's, uh, that's a big thing, goes a long way to creating that stability that they need. Uh, the VA system uh, 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 with the health care system, with the case working, the Let's, let's face it, in homelessness, a lot of things go into that, whether it's the uh, economy, uh, needing a job. That's going to go right into the homelessness. You have a lot of times there's legal issues, divorces, um, child, uh, child support, uh, um, sometimes drug and alcohol problems. Right. So you need, you need all these uh, systems and all these uh, programs to help put together a package to to get that stability so uh, the veteran can sustain themselves. Jerry, we talk about um, finding veterans housing and we just, uh, maybe a year ago or so, uh, we also got involved with uh, housing for veterans with the Kilmer housing in Edison. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, through the Edison project, uh, the county provided funding for about 30 of the 120 units there at the Kilmer uh, facility, and uh, veterans had priority or preference, I should say, preference for uh, new residents there, and it provided a, a really good resource to expand where we can encourage people to consider living and to support them in that effort. So that opened up about six months ago, I believe. And uh, we just recently were... Uh at a groundbreaking yes. that something that uh, in Edison, the old Roosevelt Hospital, the historic building, we're in the process of redeveloping the interior of it and we're going to provide 84 uh, affordable senior housing and uh, there's a small component there for homeless. Yes. And then also we are going to do 25% of those 84 
with veterans preference maybe you could tell our audience a little bit about that sure um, that's a really uh, very exciting project we'll be rehabilitating uh, the building which as we've talked about it so many people have a connection uh, to that facility whether it was their grandparents or someone else uh, not only in its history as uh, the old TB hospital but in its just uh, positioning within the county so we're really excited that there will be the units available it will be one and two bedroom apartments um, as you uh, described 84 units and they'll be affordable and it will provide independent living for people in the county. There'll be a manager on site to provide support and then down the road there'll also be social services there as well as health care on site which will be a wonderful resource uh, for the older adults who live there. It's going to be a beautiful project because uh, first of all it's on a beautiful landscape there. You have the view yes. of Roosevelt Park we're maintaining, because uh, for the historic value, we are maintaining the current way the uh, exterior looks. And, you know, right across the street behind the, the Roosevelt residence is Menlo Park Mall. So it's really a perfect location for our uh, seniors to uh, have. And it's, the, you know, this way they could stay local in their community that they come from and it gives them their independence and, and I think it's a win-win uh, for the county completely uh, for our seniors and that took a lot of time and effort to get involved with that project but uh, at the end of the day it's going to be a beautiful uh, it's going to really uh, flourish into a beautiful thing like you said it's going to have a health component whether it has physical therapy or different uh, health services that we're able to provide Bob, you mentioned a little bit about veteran services. What other issues that you think of that veterans may face? You know, like we said, you came back from Vietnam and it was not a pretty picture. And we need to make sure that that doesn't happen again. And, and back then, I don't think you had these services that are available today. Um. A lot, a lot of it is education. A lot of services are out there that a lot of people don't know about. And uh, uh, so it's, you have education of, A, what's available, but also a lot of veterans come back and want to continue their education. That's why the GI Bill is out there and uh, the Montgomery GI Bill, post 9-11 bill, to help uh, veterans continue their education. Um, you have your health care issues. Uh, your VA system has been going through a lot of a lot of uh, turmoil over the last couple of years. Uh, I I can tell you from my first experience to today, there has been a tremendous amount of improvement with the VA system. Uh, still, there still needs to be some things done on there to to streamline the process, and that is happening. All right, um, uh, a lot of. Uh, Legal assistance, I mentioned before, you have a lot of veterans that are coming home, unfortunately, with the multiple deployments that they have, uh, a lot of broken marriages. We're seeing a lot of uh, single parent veterans that are coming out there, female veterans with children and male veterans with children. Uh, a lot of them uh, have issues with uh, uh, child support. Uh, so they, they need help with, with those legal systems. Uh, Another thing out there, like I mentioned before, too, is we need caseworkers uh, to, to help uh, these people, a better term might be a navigator, to help the veteran navigate through all the systems that are out there because uh, there are so many things that are available out there that uh, you need help trying to fit that pro uh, program to what the veteran's needs are. So, uh, and. I see improvement in that every day, and it's going to be, I think it has to be a continuous improvement. We learn as we go along. And it's important, or it's incumbent upon us to make sure that we market that. You know, I've been going around with staff to right. different veterans organizations mm -hmm. right. to let them know that we have these services available, the various services, whether it be the veteran's uh, ID card, the, right. the prescription card. You know, make sure that they uh, bring with them their DD-214. And, and the discount card is so important to let the, you know, and there's a list of companies and vendors that provide a discount for our veterans. Okay. Uh, Jerry, our Veterans Housing Assistance Program uh, that we help our veterans with issues 
it's a housing first approach, correct? That's correct. And what that means is that, as, as Bob had alluded to earlier, sometimes homelessness is a problem having permanent housing, but it can also be other problems that someone's experiencing or challenges. So our philosophy and the model that we work in is to get someone into permanent housing first and then to link them up or provide services to support them in the other areas. Um, we found that that works very well with not only our veterans but with the other groups that we're working with to address homelessness including individuals and families. And we've had that program since we initiated it and we're in or we made the announcement in 2011 and 2012 we put the money in the budget we started in 2012 with the funding correct with the veterans housing assistance program correct. yes you started that back in 2011 and uh, it took really took off and running it became quickly a model program that was actually um, acknowledged uh, at the federal level it received the national coalition for homeless veterans partnership award uh, showing uh, its appreciation and and uh, really identifying it as a model, not only in terms of the commitment of the freeholders and the county, but in terms of the partnerships that we put into place. And we've helped uh, a lot of families in, in, yes. in Middlesex County, correct? Three, yes, 300 veterans and their families have been assisted. Wow, that's, and you know, and, and, and that's uh, kudos to your department and your staff and all the people that are involved in our partners as well. And I think that that's, uh, you know, and that's a testament to the commitment that everybody has in the county and, and the partnerships that we have with yes. veterans organizations as well. When our veterans need help, Middlesex County does its level best to meet their needs. We are proud and committed to collaborate with federal, state, local, and nonprofit groups in aiding our veterans. Together, we can repay those who have kept our nation safe and strong serving our nation. These men and women have given of themselves to protect our freedom. I ask that you remember their bravery, not only on Veterans Day, but every day. If you know someone that could benefit from the programs we've discussed today, please visit our county website at www.middlesexcountynj.gov and search Veterans Services. I want to thank Jerry McKenzie and Bob Porter for joining me today and for their continued efforts to improve the lives of all our veterans. Please stay tuned as we show highlights from our recent announcement about effectively ending veterans homelessness in the county. Thank you for watching this month's edition of Spotlight on Middlesex County. I am thrilled, thrilled beyond all measure to announce to you that Middlesex County has effectively ended homelessness for our veterans in Middlesex County. This has been certified by three federal agencies, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, the United States Interagency Council on Homelessness, and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. We have obtained functional zero. To put it in layman's terms, we have the infrastructure and systems in place to ensure that any veteran experiencing or at risk of homelessness will get the support he or she needs to quickly obtain a permanent home. Those of you that know me know that helping our veterans is a passion of mine. And this achievement in particular is so very close to my heart. In 2012, at my behest, the Freeholder Board created a Veterans Housing Assistance Program to assist veterans and their families at risk of homelessness or experiencing homelessness. The Freeholders committed $100,000 each year since then to fund the program. This commitment will continue. County staff, wow. We have a tremendous county staff that they work with the nonprofit Coming Home of Middlesex County, two federally funded supportive services for veteran families programs, Soldier On and Community Hope, and a network of veterans organizations and community and faith-based partners. So far, 300 veterans 
and their families have been assisted by this program. They have received funds to help with down payments and security deposits, rental assistance, and other costs that have been obstacles to finding permanent homes. In addition to the assistance program, my freeholder colleagues and I passed a resolution in 2014 endorsing First Lady Michelle Obama's Mayor's Challenge to End Veterans Homelessness. It's a team effort. I can't take credit for this alone. There have been so many people dedicated that comes from their hearts that do it because they do it for the right reasons. But when you think about what each of these men and women have done for each of us, you realize that helping them transition back home after serving our country is the absolute least that we all can do. I wish to thank and commend my friend and fellow freeholder Blanquita Valente, who spearheaded our initial program to end homelessness in the county and was the force behind the establishment of the county's Homelessness Trust Fund, which predates our Veterans Assistance Program. I also wish to thank our partners in the community who work tirelessly to see the needs of our veterans. Thanks to our federal and state partners who recognize the important work we are doing here and have supported us. Lastly, I thank and applaud all, all the veterans here today and every man and woman who has served this country. Your sacrifices are what made the United States the best nation in the world. Without you and your fellow servicemen and women, we would not enjoy all the rights and freedoms that we have. This is the story of many hands and heads working together to achieve a common goal. All, as I, all I can say is we did it, and we did it together. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone that's here today and I ask a question, what would we do without our veterans? My brother was a veteran, my husband was a veteran, who served in Japan during peacetime. You have saved us in war and in peace, and we owe you a great debt, all the, our veterans. Today is a day of celebration, as the Freeholder Director said, and it's appropriate that so many of our community partners are here to celebrate with us because it's only through the collaboration and commitment of many that this milestone could be reached. Along with the county, you have been steadfast in your determination to put the resources and system in place to address the housing needs of our veterans. I'm very proud to be part of this effort and I look forward to continuing to work with you to meet the needs of our veterans who are so deserving of our help. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, and what a great afternoon we have for a great event. And uh, I also want to certainly give thanks to our veterans, because if you weren't here uh, to serve us, we all wouldn't be here. So it's kind of easy to say thank you to you. When I came to HUD a couple of years ago, my first event was Kilmer Homes. And that's where, uh, and, and you know, as you know, and, I, and, and just recently, oh, maybe six months ago, Freeholder, we actually opened, we actually opened Kilmer Homes. And there are a number of those units that are dedicated uh, to, vet to homeless vets. And at that event, I met both Freeholder Rios and Free Freeholder Valente. And I was charged to go around New Jersey, talk to mayors about joining uh, the mayor's challenge. I took the opportunity to talk to Fre Freeholder Rios. We had a subsequent meeting, and it was a great meeting. It was, uh, it was not really a hard sell. Uh, actually, when he started telling me that he had, actually the county had done all this work already, uh, it was just a matter of putting icing on the cake. Uh, the cake was, st was there. What is remarkable, and, and what we understand when this whole notion of ending veterans homeless came up, People were obviously sarcastic, you know, cynical about it. Oh, you really can't do it. Well, guess what? We have done it. You have done it. So with that, I, I want to thank 
you all for all your efforts. You know, we at the federal government give out the money. So we take great pride when the money is well spent. So we're particularly, and Emory's shaking her head because uh, sometimes that don't, doesn't always happen. So we always take pride in, in the great work that you do. And with that, Freeholder, if you could come up. So this is the letter that was sent uh, to the Freeholder Board acknowledging that they have effectively ended veterans' homelessness, and I want to present it to Freeholder Rios. Thank you so much. Again, it's, it, it, it really gives me great pleasure to be here today and accomplish this. And it, it took a lot of hard work, but uh, at the end of the day, we got, to the, we got to the finish line. And it was, you know, it, it, and it was a relay race. It wasn't just one person. I want to thank my field of colleagues for supporting this, because without you, we wouldn't be here. And, that's, and I mean that wholeheartedly. And, and again, I want to thank all of you for being here. And again, most importantly, I want to thank our veterans for what you have done, because without all of you, we wouldn't even be able to gather at an event like this today.